Hello and welcome to Audiobook Reviews. In this video, I'll be discussing Rhapsody by Elizabeth Hayden. Now, I'm going to <laughs> warn right away, this is probably going to come out a little bit ranty, but I can't remember the last time I disliked a book so much that I actually didn't finish it, and Rhapsody definitely landed there for me. I had so many issues with this book, and after finally I was about a 450 pages in, I realized I still had 200 to go, and I just gave up. It, it wasn't worth it. I wanted to just start something else that I actually might enjoy and be done with this book. So to briefly sum up Rhapsody, it follows the title character Rhapsody, who gets kind of pulled in with these two other shady characters, and they are off to do something. And so much is not really ever explained whatsoever, even at the point I'm at. They've started very slowly revealing a couple things, but you never really see any motivation for what is actually going on besides these two people, which are first one's called the brother, but is changed to Ahmed the snake due to the magic system in the world, the other Grunthor, and they are fleeing someone who's trying to kill them. So that's the initial piece, but it's really evident there's something more there. We just never really find out what it is. At least I will know once again to the point that I got. But it's apparently, I realized after buying it built as also a romance, and I didn't see any of that. Granted, I'm not really a big romance person, but the only, I suppose, romance was a kind of odd first 30 pages. That was the prologue where... <laughs> You have two, like, 13-year-old characters who apparently are in love. And the the scenes, like, I'm not a huge fan of sex scenes in books in general, but when it's between 13-year-olds, and it was just kind of ridiculous to begin with. So starting right off there, I thought, like, I'm probably not going to like this book. But I kept going, and the the story and the tone, everything shifted pretty dramatically from that as we get into the actual main bulk of the story, but it remained quite slow. We don't really get much character development. Uh, we find out some traumatic things in Rhapsody's past is about it. Well, obviously, we know the prologue, but there are so many of these things that are just kind of thrown in and then not really touched and not brought to life. And for me, if I'm 450 pages in a book and I still don't really know why I'm reading or what these characters are trying to do, that's really not a good sign. So, did not enjoy this book. Like I said, I cannot remember the last time I actually did not finish a book. Uh, usually it has to be something pretty awful for me not to. And I'm not necessarily saying this book is that bad, but I've got a huge amount of books that I'd like to read, and th this book did nothing for me at all. And I just, it's I didn't enjoy it. They most certainly won't read any other books in the series or by this author at this point. Uh, if you have read and have a different opinion, definitely let me know because I don't know if it's just me because um, the author apparently does have quite a few other books that have been at least somewhat successful. But this book just really did nothing for me and did not make me want to read at all. So with that, I'm going to discuss some things that will go more so into spoilers. And this is where it'll definitely get a little bit more ranty. Um, really for the rest of this video, I've already kind of done the summary up front. So for the rest of this video, there will be spoilers. So there's not going to be a timestamp to skip to. It's just from here on out. If you don't want spoilers, this would be the time to end. But really, I'm going to talk about more details and just reasons why I, this book drove me a little bit crazy. So starting off with, we have the prologue, which involves, uh, 13-year-old boy being taken from the future, put in the past where he meets Rhapsody before she was Rhapsody, and that's they have their little romance. And like I said, weird enough having a sex scene between 13-year-old characters, uh, and at, well, the, she was 12 at the time it was her birthday, but she was turning 13. That's already a bit odd, but having the scene where they both just are come from having no idea what's going on to knowing exactly what they're doing and trying to romanticize it, just still weird for me. It was weird. Didn't care for it. But then we go into the current timeline where the story 
takes place. Well, there's a couple of timelines. This book does involve time travel, but we, we jump forward in time when it's just he's pulled back into the future very quickly afterwards. And we have the character of Rhapsody, and we're told several times really early on that she was a prostitute, but then became a singer or a namer, basically somebody who uses kind of the soft magic system of the world that has a lot to do with music and with vibrations and words of power, that sort of thing. But we're kind of repeatedly told that. And then throughout the story, too, we hear, and pretty early on, we hear more about uh, this person named Michael, who apparently was somebody from her past. And this is where it just kind of starts with this part of the theme seems almost to just be like men are terrible and evil in this. And there are definitely parts that just kind of almost read like a lifetime movie. Um, and we, we find out that Michael, not only is he, you know, a terrible person and he's a murderer and he's, you know, really vicious and tortures people and kills people for no reason. He's also a rapist. And there's this whole flashback scene where we find out that he basically kept her captive for two weeks and, made her do whatever all because if she didn't then he was also going to like rape and violate this small child uh which he just planned to do anyway afterwards so not only is he all these things but he, he's got to be a rapist and a pedophile and we we have to keep bringing him up quite a bit and that's used later on to show that Rhapsody just feels like she has to protect children no matter what the cost. And that's sort of a plot point later, but it just doesn't really even make sense. Her reaction to children, whether or not they're actually being abused. And it's it was a bit of a stretch. And once again, just seemed like I'm going to really make sure that this person is bad. It's like you could have communicated that this is a bad guy, that he's a terrible person. But it, it always seems to be that's kind of the, the trope with it's using rape and sexual assault and apparently pedophilia in this to really show these people are bad and it was really hit on but then she meets who she ends up using her power accidentally to change the identity of one person to be Ahmed and grunther and she meets them and grunther's kind of the stereotypical gentle giant he's huge and he's this like kind of like half creature type person but he's super nice and Ahmed's just mean all the time and bitter and they end up traveling and essentially they kind of kidnap her and they travel through the roots of this really important tree and they're in there for apparently years uh going through this tree through the roots all throughout the earth and they end up actually passing through the core of the earth and coming out the other side but we spend about a hundred pages of them traveling through the roots now Granted, it is supposed to have taken quite a long amount of time, but we spend literally a hundred pages of just kind of they walked again, then they got tired, then they ate, and then uh, there's like two times where they get attacked by these like giant, you know, creature worm things, all kinds of vermin and whatnot. It happens like twice, but otherwise it goes along. And you think, oh, maybe this is going to be when they're going to develop the characters, but not really, because you have Ahmed who is just still a mean and doesn't share any information is constantly like making comments about her being a prostitute and whatnot throughout this time like they've now been like in close quarters for years and like still gonna do that okay i guess just he's just bad because he's a man even though he's one of her companions who she ends up apparently being close to despite this which also makes no sense to me uh, her being close with Grunther totally makes sense. They bond, and he kind of is there to protect her and is very nice to her. But why she would care at all about this guy who's done nothing but kidnap her and be mean to her, and it's not even shown as like Stockholm. It showed that she like she knows she probably shouldn't like him, and just still like that's her people. But they end up when they finally, after a couple of years of traveling through the roots and through the earth, they come out and they're like fifteen hundred years in the future which is near the time where her lost love had come from, but come to find out he's dead, but maybe not dead. And I, I don't know. I assume they were going to bring something else about that up in the end of the book. Um, but from there, the plot makes just even less sense because still at this point, we're not really told what they're looking for. And Rhapsody has no clue. Like she's never really been told anything. Ackman and Grunther are obviously looking for something. We slowly get bits and pieces here and there. But they decide they're just going to kind of not talk to anyone. 
and slowly they learn the language, which is a little bit different. But even then, we have this whole start to meeting the rest of the characters after they're hiding out for a while, where Rhapsody just kind of walks up and to a priest and doesn't speak or anything, and eventually he brings her to like the head priest. And this starts something that I was so sick of reading by the time I got to where I stopped, where apparently after passing through the center of the earth, the fire in the center of the earth, Rhapsody has become just like the most beautiful possible woman in existence. And she's so beautiful that literally any time any man sees her, not only do they like gape and stare, but they immediately get sexually aroused just from seeing her and also just can't control themselves. And literally this priest that's escorting her to like the head of his order just can't help but accidentally just grope her. I don't know, we're not even realizing it because, you know, men have absolutely no control and she's just that beautiful. And this is brought up repeatedly. <laughs> what makes it even more annoying is she absolutely will not and cannot actually recognize this even though her two companions flat out just said hey no like you're like insanely beautiful now like unbelievably beautiful it's like other world and she's like oh you no i'm not and she constantly anytime somebody reacts this way she'll be like oh my gosh i just must be so hideous or disfigured even though i've literally looked in a mirror and i know that i'm not but i must just be crazy because all these people are reacting what else could it be and it's infuriating, and it just keeps going, it keeps getting brought up, and there were actually several times where I read another passage of this happening again, that I nearly put this book down. It's not a plot device at this point, okay? I mean, yeah, she can be pretty, and maybe that'll help, but still, like, they're going around, and it seems random people are just not quite as affected, but then other people, like, are literally, like, about to just, like, have a heart attack or a stroke or something, and she's just so insanely beautiful. I know it's fantasy, but it's just not realistic. And it once again just seems to be like kind of that like lifetime, like, oh, she's just used to all men, you know, are pigs and are going to try and grope her and stare at her and whatnot. And that's just a normal thing. She believes it can't be because she's insanely beautiful. And like, even if she is, okay, have you ever seen somebody who was just so beautiful that you just had no control over any basic animalistic urge and whatnot just from seeing them? No, I mean, that's ridiculous. It just is. It's really, really ridiculous. That's not something that would happen. And even if it's supposed to be otherworldly, it's just still the the way that it's described and it's hit on so repeatedly is just obnoxious. But so we find out they're going to be traveling somewhere. They're looking for some sort of knowledge. But once again, we're told very, very little. And something I, I will specifically say is this is the first book of a series. And it is the the whole essentially first book is introduced as the first movement going on the music motif. So I, I can definitely see that this is being set up for more to happen. But once again, if I'm 450 pages into your book and I still feel like nothing has really happened and I still don't really know what I'm waiting for to happen and I don't really care about the characters at all because there's been extremely little development into who they are at all. Why would I want to keep reading your book? Like it, it's once again, it's, it's done literally nothing for me. But the final scene that I read, which I just finally said, okay, this is just stupid now, and I'm done. A new character was brought up who, through somehow, is like he's practically invisible. It's very hard to see, and he is following Rhapsody and watching all these people, you know, get into havoc and pass out because she's so beautiful. And then a girl that she had brought along with their group is trying to pickpocket him. And it describes, and this is not played for comedy. This is played for like, this is supposed to be a serious thing, is this girl is apparently trying to pickpocket him and mistakes his testicles for a coin pouch and grabs them and tries to yank them away. And then he like grabs her arm and threatens her. And I just, I just stopped. It, it was so ludicrous once again, not even tried to like play for a laugh, not at all the tone of this story at all. And I just like, not only has there been a lot of, you know, bigger, really big problems. I know that's kind of probably more of a small thing, but that's just where I, I lost it immediately after another iteration of, I just don't understand. I'm so beautiful. Why are people giving me things? And 
uh, doing all this and then that. I'm just, I was done. I don't understand what the author is trying to do here. Uh, it does read a little bit more like kind of the classic fantasy. And it almost reminds me, because with the slowness of kind of story and the way it's written, almost reminds me of Stephen Donaldson and uh, Thomas Covenant, except that Stephen Donaldson's prose is so good that it can you can be kind of like he can be forgiven for having things move pretty slow because it's just beautiful to read. The prose isn't bad in this book, but it's definitely not good enough to have even me even be a little bit forgiving of the complete lack of anything happening for the most part. It, it's just not at all giving me anything that makes me want to read it. And I, I just, I guess I have not stopped a book in the middle in quite some time, but I, I decided to, and I'm already a hundred pages into another book at this point, And I'm, I'm really glad I didn't finish this book. So if you've read it and have differing thoughts, I'd love to hear them here. Maybe if getting to the ending does somehow redeem it in some way, I normally really, really try to give books a chance, and I've, I've read books through completely that I ended up just not liking at all, but this just frustrated me enough that I did put it down. So if you have differing thoughts, let me know. I would love to hear them. But that is my take on Rhapsody by Elizabeth Hayden. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like and or subscribe if you'd like to see more of this content.